The country is capable of creating more opportunities. Sky is the limit. This is Nirmala Sitaraman's 30-page speech for the 2024 Union Budget and this is very, very important. While every budget is important, this one has even more significance. Why, you ask? Well, the BJP got an unexpected result this general election and it had to take support of alliance partners to come to power. The opposition party's political attacks on the BJP about rising unemployment and inequality were also taking over voters' narratives. Experts wondered, if this election loss will lead to any changes in Modi's budget framework. I went through the entire budget speech document and picked out five points that I felt were important and interesting for us, the people and for the economy. Yes, income tax is very important, we'll come to that as well, but before that, let's touch upon other interesting topics. Let's start with the elephant in the room, the impact of a coalition government. The BJP is in power because of support of its allies, the JDU, which hails from Bihar, and the TDP, which comes from Andhra Pradesh. Both these states saw money flowing in for them in one way or another. In Nirmala Sitaraman's announcement, these projects were under the category of social justice, which indicates that the government is allocating money to these states on a need basis, and not just because it is the best economic investment. Let's look at Bihar. The eastern state of Bihar got sanctions worth 58,900 crore rupees in 2024 union budget. This includes rupees 26,000 crore for road projects, a power plant for 21,400 crore rupees, and rupees 11,500 for fighting floods. Let's come to Andhra Pradesh. Rupees 15,000 crore will be arranged by the center with the help of multilateral development agencies to develop Andhra Pradesh's capital, Amravati. In addition, more investment will be provided towards capital investments. Grants for certain backward areas in the state will also be provided. So, as you can see, the states of BJP's coalition partners did get special mentions in the budget speech. But will this continue in every budget for the next five years? Will the coalition partners demand more in the future? Well, who can predict what Nitish and Naidu will do? Not me for sure. Now comes probably the most controversial part of the budget, jobs. Lack of jobs had become a major political issue in the recent elections and it only makes sense that the government will do something to tackle it in this budget. As expected, the finance minister did focus on this subject quite a bit. She introduced some schemes which offer employment-linked incentives. Let me tell you about them. Scheme A. Here the government will provide one month's wage up to rupees 15,000 to all persons newly entering the formal sector. This is only applicable on people whose salary is less than rupees 1 lakh a month. This scheme will benefit 2 crore youth, Sita Raman said in her speech. And yes, it is important to note that employees will only benefit from this once. Scheme B. This is for the manufacturing sector. Nirmala Sita Raman said that the government will provide incentive for the first four years to employees and employers in regards to EPFO contributions. And now comes Scheme C. In all sectors, the government will reimburse employers up to Rs 3,000 per month for two years towards EPFO contributions for each additional employee. This scheme is targeted towards employers, so they hire more employees in the formal sector. In addition to these schemes, the government said it will create working women hostels in collaboration with the industry. I don't know how it will pan out in real life, but the idea of creating hostels for working women is a thumbs up from me. The government also announced a skilling program which aims to benefit 20 lakh youth over a five-year period. This was the claim made by Nirmala Sitaraman in her budget speech. It also talked about upgrading 1,000 existing industrial training institutes. While all this sounds nice, it is important to remember the government's previous skilling programs. They were successful in skilling a lot of people the problem with them was that students were not getting a job after their training. The placement rates were even lower than 20% at times. In the past, the BJP has aggressively digitized how it governs the country and this economy in various ways. Look at Aadhaar and UPI for example. This year seems to be no different. 
Nirmala Sitaraman proposed digitization of numerous things such as a digital top survey for 300 districts will be taken using digital public infrastructure or DPI. Most interesting aspect for me was that the government proposed a new model in which public sector banks could analyze digital footprints of MSMEs to assess the risk of granting loans to them. In addition to this, there are several other services that the government wants to digitize. Yes, UPI and Aadhaar have been game changers in providing services electronically, like in the case of providing subsidies to direct benefit transfers. But one should also question how secure and private this digital data is. Will the government go on indiscriminately collecting data? Will Indian citizens even have a choice of saying no to the government? More access to data gives government the power to surveil its citizens and maybe even control them. The government needs to balance the benefits it wants to provide using digital public infrastructure by providing adequate safeguards so people can feel safe. Changes in personal taxes are often the most talked about aspects of the budget. However, it impacts fewer people than what you would expect. Only about 2% of the total people in India pay income tax. For income tax, the tax labs have been revised. You can see the changes in income tax on your screen. The major difference is that those earning between 6 and 7 lakh earlier had to pay 10% tax. Now they'll have to pay just 5%. And those earning rupees 9 to 10 lakh earlier had to pay 15% tax. Now they'll have to pay just 10%. These changes in tax brackets are minimal and might not have much impact on the overall population. One silver lining here is that standard deduction under the new tax regime has been increased from rupees 50,000 to rupees 75,000. This could help taxpayers save some extra money. Nirmala Sitaraman also reduced corporate tax on foreign companies from 40 to 35%. Reducing the fiscal deficit has been a major focus of the government since the last few years and this year is no different. The government plans to reduce its fiscal deficit to 4.9% of the GDP. Fiscal deficit is the difference between what a government earns and what it spends. Fiscal deficit in 2023-24 was 5.6% of GDP. Very high fiscal deficit can be problematic and it's a job of every government to keep it under control. The fiscal deficit went very high during COVID-19 period due to sudden extra expenditure. But now, the government's fiscal consolidation approach has received praise from experts. These were the five points in the budget that I thought were important and interesting to look at. Let me know what you think. Could the government have done anything different in this budget? And yes, what was it? One more thing before you leave. Don't forget to check out budget memes floating around the internet. You'll have a great time.